You are listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, social, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Visit exopolitics.org and sign up to receive our email notifications, news, and information. Be informed and be aware with Exopolitics Today. And now... Here is Dr. Michael Sala. Reusable rockets mark the launch of a two-tiered space system. On July 20, Jeff Bezos' company Blue Origin was able to launch a spacecraft beyond the von Kármán line, which is where space officially begins at 100 kilometers in the atmosphere, above the atmosphere. And Jeff Bezos was one of the astronauts, including his brother and two other people. Now, what was significant was that that craft used a booster that was able to successfully land on the launching pad. So that was replicating the technology that Elon Musk pioneered with SpaceX. So it means now that two companies are using fully reusable booster rockets. What that means is that now it's going to be so much more cheaper for commercial companies to launch into space. So that'll be a boon to the space industry. It'll mean that space tourism becomes affordable. In fact, one of the astronauts on the Blue Origin flight was a paying customer from the Netherlands. And so we're going to be seeing a lot more of these space tourism flights. Many companies are now going to be able to use reusable rockets for their own efforts to launch space tourism, space mining, space exploration, satellites and so forth. So in many ways this is going to make it much easier for things such as the establishment of bases on the moon. The Artemis Accords plans to use some of these reusable rocket technologies for the first scheduled launch to the moon Uh, that is going to occur on 2024, carrying uh, American and other astronauts to the moon for the first time since the early 1970s. And so there's going to be a race as many companies, many nations use reusable rocket technologies to get people and various companies and national space programs uh, to the moon, to Mars, to asteroids, Uh, to be able to do all of these different commercial activities. And that is something that the Artemis Accords, that is a set of bilateral agreements that was signed by the US with other major spacefaring nations, all agreeing to collaborate in sending up space missions where they could establish mining, tourism, space exploration, and to basically make it easier for humanity to extend far out into space. In many ways, this is a good thing because reusable rockets does make it possible for the human presence to be spread out into our solar system. Now, why is this a two-tiered system? Well, quite simply, uh, there have been very advanced technologies that have been developed in secret space programs going all the way back to the 1940s and 50s that now are being regularly used by different space programs that are run by the militaries of the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain, and other countries are also trying to do the same thing. And they're using these advanced anti-gravity, torsion field propulsion systems, electromagnetic propulsion systems. And this is something that is very proprietary and that is what is being used in these secret space programs. So the question is, well, will these be released into the civilian sector? Well, I suspect, given what we're seeing now with our SpaceX, Blue Origin, uh, Virgin Galactic is also uh, launching tourists into space, even though they're not using the uh, reusable booster rockets that SpaceX and Blue Origin have pioneered. Uh, We are seeing multiple companies now 
continuing to use rocket technologies while you have these anti-gravity, torsion field, electromagnetic propulsion systems being secretly used. And so I think what we're going to witness now, uh, and this is, I guess, part of the plan of the deep state, is to roll out this two-tiered system where civilians, you and I, uh, will be able to have access to cheap rocket propulsion technologies that not only make it possible to travel to the moon as a space tourist and to do trips into uh, outer space or to Mars, but also make it possible for cheap rocket propelled uh, flights on Earth itself. So you can fly from, say, Tokyo to um, New York City in under an hour using these booster rockets, something that has been hypothesized by uh, space rocket scientists for for many years, going all the way all the way back to 1950, when a Chinese scientist, Dr. Shen Shu Shen, was resident in the United States, working at uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and became a star for suggesting that you could actually use uh, rockets, reusable rockets, to get from New York to Beijing or Tokyo in in 30 minutes or less. So this uh, emergence of a two-tiered system is uh, something that really is not desirable. I mean, it's, it's a lie. It's a way for the military industrial complex to keep away from the civilian sector the most advanced technologies which would enable us to go into deep space and also even travel interstellar. That is using these anti-gravity, torsion field, antimatter, electromagnetic propulsion systems that can actually manipulate space-time. I mean, that seems to be the key here, is that the deep state, the controls, do not want the civilian sector to get their hands on these kinds of advanced propulsion systems that can manipulate space-time because they want to control it themselves. And what they want to do is to allow us, civilians to be able to get around our solar system cheaply on rockets but none of it is going to be able to manipulate space-time and it'll be something very similar to what was depicted in the sci-fi series The Expanse where humanity colonizes space and is able to establish mines on on the in on the moons of Jupiter the moons of Saturn the asteroid belt but it's all using these rocket uh, propelled technologies that, that take a long time to get to places. And sure, you could uh, have various ways of enhancing these. But the really most advanced technologies are, are kept in the military sector. And that there's this unwritten agreement between the militaries and the military industrial complex of, of many nations not to disseminate these to the civilian sector for national security reasons, for um, being able to ensure that these very powerful space-time altering devices or propulsion systems just don't get out of the hands of the security uh, apparatus. And, um, you know, I have mixed feelings about that. Obviously, it means that uh, we're going to have this two-tiered system being set up and it's going to be promoted for some time to come while at the same time, uh, the most advanced technologies are going to be used by the, by the militaries for their various activities. And so the military will be able to fly interstellar uh, using these uh, proprietary uh, propulsion technologies, and it's not going to be released to the civilian sector. Uh, this two-tier system is something that is planned to be unleashed, and you know, whether it can succeed or not, I guess that depends on us. Are we going to allow it? Um, at the moment, uh, it's very difficult for the alternative media to be able to, pro to promote anything, given that the mainstream media, the, the mockingbird-controlled media, uh, can gaslight people in so many different ways. Um, we're watching this now you know, with the lockdowns, with the, the jab, the mandatory uh, aspects of that, and you know, people that refuse to get the, the jab, I mean, they are now being treated as modern day lepers. And this is all gaslighting. If the deep state and the mockingbird media can gaslight us about these very fundamental issues, then I think it's not going to be too much of a stretch 
to imagine that they are going to try and gaslight us, that this two-tiered system is, is okay, that yes, you're going to have rocket reusable rockets being used for the civilian space sector and these more advanced uh, technologies using uh, all these torsion field, any matter, any gravity propulsion systems are going to be deemed to be too dangerous to be released into the pu public sector and it's only going to be uh, select major aerospace companies and their various customers at the national level, the militaries of of the United States, China, Russia, France, Britain, and so forth, they're going to be allowed access to these things. Kind of similar to how today you have uh, advanced nuclear propulsion systems being used by the uh, nuclear aircraft carriers of the United States and some other nations that, that use these kinds of very advanced nuclear propulsion systems that are not released. Now, the Navy has been trying to release some of these uh, uh, portable nuclear fusion systems uh, through the patents system. A Navy scientist, Dr. Salvador Payes, has released a patent showing how one of these portable nuclear fusion reactors can work. But whether that's going to be something that is allowed to be released into the public arena for this space industry, uh, we can only hope it is. Uh, certainly there are those white hats that do want it to happen, but we are seeing right now with SpaceX, with Blue Origin and many other companies that are going to be using these uh, reusable booster rockets, that uh, a two-tiered space system is being set up and that we are going to witness some positives with that. Space tourism, being able to fly to the moon, to Mars, and establishing colonies there, and that people will be able to do this. But at the same time, the most advanced technologies based on space time altering propulsion systems are going to be restricted to a very few. And that's something that isn't very desirable, and we're going to have to try our hardest to make people aware of this. The interesting question here is. Why is it that now our humanity is being allowed to establish colonies on the moon, on Mars, and even plans for colonizing the asteroid belt and beyond using these reusable booster rocket technologies is occurring? Why is that now? It does suggest that there has been some fundamental sea change at the exopolitical level that there have been agreements reached where humanity is going to be allowed to colonize our solar system, but travel outside of our solar system is going to be restricted. And that's why I think this two-tiered system is being set up. Extraterrestrials, Galactic Federation have agreed, and recently I, I did an article where I discussed some information that Elena Danan received about agreements being reached with uh, major nations being led by the United States that are working together as part of the Artemis Accords uh, that this is going to allow our solar system to be controlled by humanity. So I think this two-tiered system is, is how they're going to do it. We're going to have the reusable rockets being used for civilians, and, and that way, we are going to just extend ourselves throughout our solar system and colonize and, and do what we do as humans, which is uh, we're easily divided and, and we are easily uh, misled and gaslighted by the controllers, by the deep state. And on the other hand, we're going to have a much more restricted set of secret space programs that are using these space time altering propulsion systems to travel outside of our solar system. It seems that the Galactic Federation has agreed to this two-tiered system because this is probably a way for them to observe humanity, how we behave in our solar system and regulate us in terms of our behavior outside of our solar system. So certainly not a very desirable way for humanity to become aware of itself as a spacefaring civilization, but that seems to be what is happening now. So get, get used to the idea of this two-tiered system where the most advanced stuff is going to be declassified to a certain extent so that major aerospace companies can build fleets of anti-gravity spacecraft, but these are only going to be allowed to be used by select customers. 
that is uh, the militaries and um, intelligence gathering agencies, but that as far as the civilian space sector is concerned, reusable rockets. That's about all we're going to be allowed to be used. So uh, this is something we need to be aware of and we need to resist this as far as possible. To learn more about the Artemis Accords and how there's going to be this multinational coalition centered around the United States for colonizing space, for supporting the commercial exploitation and setting up colonies and space mining and tourism and so forth, then I recommend my book, Space Force, Our Star Trek Future. And finally, I want to recommend my upcoming webinar, the Alien False Flag PSYOP, that's coming up on August 1st. You can find more details on my website, exopolitics.org. Thank you for listening and subscribing.